Fourth is a short story of the life of Edward, once Britain's king, now the Duke of Windsor. Always a prince, briefly a king. Britain's man of destiny, who renounced the world's greatest throne for the love of an American-born woman. From early childhood, England's Prince Charming was trained to rule and was constantly prepared in due time to grace the throne. Here we see him at a public function walking with the royal family. The full happy years of his youth turned rapidly to bring him to France and the grim front in the World War. He and his father welcomed Admiral Sims and the American fleet when the United States joined the Allies. There was nothing old-fashioned about Edward. He was the first English prince to fly. Through the years, he was beloved by the people of Britain and the Empire, and honors of every sort were heaped upon him in England and its lands around the world. Edward loved Canada and visited it whenever he could. He was always sure of a hearty welcome, for Canada and its people were devoted to him. It was at his own ranch they saw him at his best, happy, carefree, and doing the things he liked to do. Edward was always intensely interested in the United States, and he seldom crossed the Atlantic without visiting some part of it. Little old New York gave him the typical honored guest battery landing and the trip up Broadway amid a storm of ticker tape and torn paper. He was met and welcomed by the mayor at City Hall. As Prince of Wales, he and General Pershing were good friends, for both were soldiers. That is why on one visit to the United States, he went up the Hudson to review the West Pointers and watch them drill. It was part of his work as Prince to keep in touch with the capitals of the world. While in Washington, he met the then Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. His visits were all too brief, and on the great battleship renown, he returned home to undertake again the constant flow of innumerable tasks such as a king must do. In January 1936, his beloved father, George V, passed from the sight, but not from the hearts of the British people. So the Prince of Wales came to the throne as Edward VIII. the world had waited for, who rules less than a year. In his short reign, he found time to visit the unemployed in the distressed areas in many parts of England. He was truly their king. In South Wales, he showed his democratic leanings when he told the destitute coal miners, something must be done. Has their hopes gone with him? Wallace Warfield, now the Duchess of Windsor, is the most romantic figure in the world today. One searches in vain through all the pages of history to find a greater love or a more magnificent sacrifice than Edward for this lady of his heart. It is history that men may make kings, but women make them lovers. Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin held to the conservative tradition and supported by the high church, he told the king what he should do. Then came December 10th, 1936, when the king gave his answer, abdication. The next night from Windsor Castle, he delivered his farewell address to his people and the world.
This is Windsor Castle. His Royal Highness, Prince Edward. At long last, I am able to say a few words of my own. But I have found it impossible to carry the heavy burden of responsibility and to discharge my duties as king as I would wish to do without the help and support of the woman I love. And I want you to know that the decision I have made has been mine and mine alone. And now we all have a new king. I wish him and you, his people, happiness and prosperity with all my heart. God bless you all. God save the king. And so it was that love and faith gave to the British Empire a new king and a queen. George VI and his Queen Elizabeth. Here we see the little princesses Elizabeth and Marie. Edward left his beloved England for how long, no one knows. And so he retires to private life to follow the dictates of his heart. On the continent, he and his sweetheart waited slow passing days for formal events to transpire. Then at long last, the wedding day and happiness. France, June the 3rd, 1937. The bridal party, the Duke and Duchess of Windsor with Herman Rogers who gave the bride away and Major Edward Metcalf, the best man. Genial Dr. Charles Mercier, mayor of Mons, performed the French civil service, and he will never forget the day. Courageous Reverend R. Anderson Jardine performed the service of the Church of England. The romantic old Chateau de Canda was an ideal setting for this wedding of the century. Among those present were just a few close friends, a momentous event, but a modest occasion and a good time was had by all. The happy pair were just like other people on such a day.